amazing with my mind. Jesus, my Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him.
she has a wheel. Oh, in the middle of the wheel. I know he'll never, I know he'll never, never let me down. He's just a, he's just the true way that I have. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Yeah. 
praise His name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love to praise His name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love to praise His name. I love, I love to praise. 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 Magnify him this morning. Yes, Does the spirit praise him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can give him a praise this morning. Because my soul, my soul, it yes. magnifies you, oh Lord. Hallelujah. My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit praises his name. Even death could not hold him. Even in the grave, He is Lord. Even death would not hold Him captive. Even in the grave, He is Lord. My soul doth magnify, oh, my soul doth magnify the Lord. Saints, God is a good God. And I tell you, I just get excited just thinking about what God has done for us. And you know, the Lord knows how to encourage you. Yesterday was a success. Come on. Yesterday was a success. Amen. Those pastors that were here they were blessed and they made themselves vulnerable and it was just a blessing it was a blessing and it let us know that we've got to take this out of here we've got to take this on neutral ground we've got to take it to the masses and whatever we have to spend to get it there saints because that's our trial that's our test. How much we're willing to sacrifice to get this gospel into this nation. It's not going to be a cakewalk. It's going to be costly. But where God guides, he provides. Come on. Glory to God. And I, you know, I was so blessed because one of the pastors said uh, one of the pastor's wives which is which is a co-pastor of their church said that she will get with our executive director and work on some getting some doors open for this word amen that people have to be impressed to 
to to volunteer for that. Praise you, Jesus. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited because I think these leaders left here realizing that to to help to get this word to the nation is not is not promoting Bible teachers. It's promoting God and his will and his way and his word. And I think that that's what they left here with. And I pray God that that's what they retain. Amen. When they think upon the word that they received yesterday. Glory to God. I sometimes when I teach this, I, I feel so sorry for some of you because you've heard it so many times. But you're, you're very encouraging because you say you learn something each time. Praise the Lord. And that's that. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Yes. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I'm looking forward to to putting this out there on a large platform because I I want to reach this entire nation, you know, and get the leaders to to become persuaded of the mind and heart of God. That's the way apostolic order ought to be. So, amen. So I'm excited, and I hope that you are too. Bless the Lord. Uh, I want to begin today piecemealing. The Lord has said to me to, to really piecemeal this. Um, we welcome our pastor to shy from Atlanta. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. I was looking at that lady. I said, no, nah, who is that? And then when she came to the front, I'm like, oh, my God, that's too sad. Praise the Lord. And um, glory to God. I'm just blessed, amen, that you're with us today. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want us to. Oh, Chris from Fort Lauderdale. Praise the Lord. Right. <laughs> yeah, I spoke to Chris this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Chris and I go way back. Chris has been here ever since it was our Bible teachers. Praise the Lord in Jamaica. Glory to God. Amen. Chris was able to hang in here with Doc. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is so good. He is so good. You know, saints, we have traveled a long way. We have traveled a long way. And what's so beautiful about it, we still love the Lord. We love the Lord and we love one another. We care about one another. And that's a blessing. That's a blessing. You know, I get... A warm feeling every time I think about uh, the members of my my ministry, all the members in my in my ministry. There's a beautiful, you know, Bible teachers. You know, it has its faults like everything else, but there's more good than bad. Amen. Amen. Come on, there's more good than bad in Bible teachers, and and I I just get a warm feeling when I think of the the members in Bible teachers, they're just so good. And especially when I start thinking of you individually and I'm like, wow, yeah, that's where, yeah, cool. <laughs> you know, praise the Lord. I, amen. The, the, the brothers had me up last night and they came home. Amen. They had me sitting up ministering to them. Praise the Lord. They need some wisdom. Praise you, Jesus. So they come to the old lady for wisdom. <laughs> praise you, Jesus. But that's a, that's, a, that's a blessing because young people don't often seek out the wisdom of their elders. You know, that's, that's a good thing, when, especially young men come to seek out the wisdom of their elders. That's, that's good. I, I just chuckled and, amen, when they left out and I said, it's time y'all go now. Get on out of here and go so I can go to sleep. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. But I just chuckled. I said, that's a blessing. That is really a blessing. I want to begin to piecemeal this this word, the way the Father has given it. We're going to go into certain scriptures. I, each time we come together, I want to deal with a, a scripture in the new covenant that, that uh, substantiates or establishes this truth in you. We're going to hear it over and over and over again, but we're going to hear it from, from different scriptures and see that they're saying the same thing. Amen? 
there's one particular scripture I want to go to, though. This, this was so cute. <laughs> so cute. Um, in the book of St. John, 7th chapter. I want us to read this story. St. John 7, and let's just pick up Let's start reading at St. John 7 and 11. St. John 7, 11. <coughs> then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him, for some said, he is a good man. Others said, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. Mm -hmm. Howbeit no man speak openly of him for fear of the Jews. Mm -hmm. no, now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. All right. In the midst of the feast, it might have been the Feast of Tabernacles. Amen. Jesus went up and taught in the temple. Now let's, let's see what happens when he gets to this temple to teach. Mm -hmm. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Now, now, I want you to, I want you to just kind of put yourself in this setting. These are scribes and Pharisees, um, lawyers and doctors, of the Levitical law and uh, the entire old covenant. And they're saying, or sitting there listening to Jesus expound. Now Jesus is about 30, 30 something years old. And um, they know that he didn't come up in their ranks. He's not a part of the Sanhedrin council. He's not notable in the temple at Jerusalem. So they consider him as unlearned. And by their standards, he was unlearned. Amen? So they asked among themselves, how is it that this man can expound on the scriptures? How is it that he can read from the Torah and understand and expound on it in a way that we can't refute? How is it that he becomes so knowledgeable? Now, as we ask ourselves these questions or as we uh, look at this, keep in mind Nicodemus, because he was one of them. Keep in mind that in his midnight visit to Jesus, he did not realize that the kingdom of God was standing before him. He didn't realize that God was present because he thought he was dealing with just a mere man that was endowed to be a prophet, that had the anointing of the Lord resting upon him as a prophet. He didn't realize that God himself was standing before him. Well, likewise, these people were the same way. They, they did not realize that they were entertaining God. <clears throat> They did not realize that someone that is supposedly totally unlearned, I mean, you had a Paul, they could understand if it was a Paul that had sat at the feet of Gamaliel, glory to God, and, and was an expert in the scriptures. But here this man, you know, supposedly had no knowledge compared to them. 
And yet he could expound on the scriptures in such a way that they could not refute. So here, here again, we see God's presence and those who are entertaining him not realizing that he is among them. Now, I want, you to, I want you to also think on this wide. These were people that studied. These were people that were supposedly spiritually intelligent. These were the leaders. They were the leaders of the Jewish nation, the whole Jewish religion, Judaism. They were the leaders. They instructed kings and, hey, hello, not only the ordinary people, but kings as well in the law, in the law of Moses. So the, if, if anyone should have known God, it should have been them. Amen? It should have been them. Now, <clears throat> as God comes on the scene in the form of Jesus Christ, he's not recognized. The world does not know him. I want us to be prepared for the same thing. Because God is present in this world right now within us. And people are entertaining us and not knowing that they're entertaining God. Are, are you hearing me? Because he is within us. So therefore, we must make sure, as Jesus did, we need to look at how he, how he allowed God to interact with the people. This is what we need to learn from this. How he allowed God to interact with the people without being an impediment or, or an offense, uh, being a stumbling block to what God wanted to, how God wanted to minister to those people. Are, are you hearing God? And that's what we need to come away from this with. We need to come away from this understanding or learning from our master, Jesus Christ, how he interacted, how he allowed God, allowed God. Why do I say allowed, allowed God? Because even though God was in that vessel called Jesus Christ, that vessel was capable of disobedience. If it were not, there would have been no trying and testing. If it was impossible for Jesus to disobey God, there would be no trial in the wilderness. He would never have gone up, uh, been led by the Spirit for the temptation of Satan in the wilderness. Because he would not have been capable of failing that test. But he, we know that he was capable because God didn't usurp authority over the will of this man. The will, the will of the soul. God did not uh, usurp authority over the will of the soul. The soul was completely given over, completely given over to God. Amen? Are you, are you hearing that? Amen. And so if the soul did not seek its own. It did not use that body to seek its own. It allowed God to interact with the people that God wanted to communicate with. Are you, are you hearing God? Even though they didn't recognize him as God. Even though they didn't recognize him. But he has, God has a saying here. God has a, you know, he addresses that. God addresses that. The fact that they didn't know what they were talking, who they were talking to. Watch this. Amen. Where are we? What verse are we in? 16. All right. Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Now, you know, you know what's so really cute about this? They were, they were uh, murmuring among themselves. They didn't have the courage to, to say, well, how do you know so much? You know, you're not one of us. But that's what they were thinking. And that's what they were talking about among themselves. And, and you know, God, he just hears everything. Isn't that something? He just hears everything. He knows what you're talking about. He knows what you're thinking. So he just come on. He just, he just cut to the chase. And he says, my doctrine is not my own, but, he, but him that sent me. Now, this is, this, is, this is very important. 
This is very important. Jesus, Jesus constantly referred to the words that he spoke were not his, that they were God. He constantly attributed everything that he was doing, the works that he was doing, the power that he had. He always attributed it to God. He always, and that's, that's important, because those who are considered righteous must always remember to give God the glory. God must be a man whom we seek to glorify. When we seek to glorify ourselves, we're in unrighteousness. When we seek to be exalted, we're in unrighteousness. So he says, my doctrine is not my own. And notice someone else. There was someone else that was very, very keen on this, John the Baptist. John the Baptist was very keen on that. John the Baptist, when they, you know, they were ratting and raving over John the Baptist and how great he was and all of that. And John said, there's one coming after me. And I'm not even worthy to tie his shoelaces. Amen. And when they, you know, they, they, they were building John up, John said, I'm not that light. I only baptize you with water, but there's one coming that will baptize you in the Holy Ghost. You, you, know, you know? And so uh, he never took credit. He never sought his own. He never sought to build himself up. He never sought his own reputation. The scriptures say Jesus made himself of no reputation. What was he doing? He was exalting the Father. There was also a, a, a situation where he said that he that bears witness of me is he that testifies of me is greater than me. He said, I don't testify of myself, but there's another one that gives testimony of me. Now, that ought to be sufficient. What is he saying to us? He's saying to us that seek out a good testimony of God. In other words, allow God to have a good testimony of us. Hello? I want God to speak well of me. I want God to speak well of me. I want God to say that I'm his friend. Hello? I want God to say I'm his friend. I want him to, I want him to, to think well of me and have a great testimony of me, a good testimony. Look at the 17th verse. If any man <clears throat> will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Now, notice what he's doing here. I want us to understand this scripture right here, this verse. He said, if any man do the will of God, he'll know that this, 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 this that I minister comes from God. So what is he saying? He's saying that if you're not willing to do the will of God, then you're walking in disobedience. You're walking in iniquity of some sort, some sort of iniquity. And that iniquity that you walk in, and iniquity is not that you hate this person or that person all the time. Iniquity is anything that you prefer other than God. Anything that you prefer other than God or, or that, that preference that is unlawful, that has been deemed unlawful, glory to God. And so Jesus is saying, now, if you were obedient to God, you would know that this is his doctrine. Now, we need to translate that to today. If you, if, you know, there are many people that, that, that claim to be confused when they come to church, they're, they're so confused. And well, I, you know, I don't know, and this and that and all of that. Well, we can say the same thing today. If you are really seeking God, God will reveal himself to you. Now, that's just the truth, saints, and we're not going to make anything out of that more than it is. If you're seeking the Lord, the Lord will make sure that you understand when he tries to communicate with you. When we come to church and we, you know, we leave there you know, with nothing, we're empty, we're dry. It's because we do not prefer God. There's something else we, are, we, we have a preference of. We prefer something other than God. And so God now is saying that the iniquities of our heart, those things that we prefer other than him, blinds us. It blinds us. And that's what was happening with these people. They were blinded. They were blinded to, to, the, to the fact that the doctrine that he was preaching came from God. They could not see that because these guys' were hearts were not in the right place. That's what Jesus is saying. If your heart was in the right place, you would know that this is a word from God. Are you hearing him? Look at the 18th verse. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. 
Mm -hmm. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Okay, he's saying, he's saying, I don't seek my own. I seek the glory of the Father. And this is something that we must be baptized in if we're going to carry this word to the nations of the earth. We must have a resolution in our heart that we are seeking not to make a reputation for ourselves. Amen? That we're not seeking to rec rep a reputation of ourselves and we're not speaking of ourselves and we're not, we're not desirous of men to speak well of us. We want, we want them to, to see God. We want them to see and be persuaded of God. Are you, are you working with me? Amen. Of course, we want people to think when they think of us or speak of us, to think well of us. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm, that's character. We want men to know that we have good character. But I'm talking about being glorified here. We don't want people to say, and I don't want people to say, you know, uh, Dr. Banks, you know, and her doctrine and all. No, 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 no. This is the word of God. It has nothing to do with Dr. Banks. Amen. This is the word of God. I want them to exalt God. I want them to see God. I, and see... Because the fruit, see, see, when you really wanna, want to glorify God, you know where you go? You know where your focus goes? Your focus goes on the end result of the word. This is what you desire to see. You desire to see the end. And the end should be love flowing in the body of Christ. That the body is united and we are come together in love so that the world will know that God is among us. That should be our focus. We, we don't focus in on how we're being exalted or if we should be exalted or we deserve to be exalted. You know, sometimes uh, ministers will come in, and if you, don't, if you don't mention their names, they're offended. Hello. If you don't move them up to the front, they're offended. All kinds of silly little things. This is self-exhortation. And God is saying this is an impediment because we're seeking our own glory, even in little things like that. Even in little things like that. And that's why people like myself, I use myself for instance, people like me have to set up safeguards in their life. I have to have a safeguard. I have to have safeguards so that I am not exalted above measure. I have to, I have, to have those checks and balances. You know, to say, now how do you know, if people say, well, oh man, doc, that was so good. Ooh, ooh, you really can teach and daughter. I, gotta, I have to examine that. How do I feel about that? How do I feel about that? Uh, it's, you, you know, and if, because if the moment that I begin to embrace that as credit to me, I'm moving into unrighteousness. And I, and I become disqualified to carry this word to the nations. It will disqualify me because this word must be carried on a platform of purity. It must be carried on a platform of purity. Do we understand that? And so that's why the scripture says Jesus, Jesus came lowly. His estate was lowly. He didn't come in pomp and circumstance. He didn't come, you know, high and mighty. He came lowly, humble, in a state of humility. Glory to God. Why? Because he came to make a reputation for God. He came to declare who God was. Are you hearing God? He came to declare who God was. I remember Peter and James, uh, I think it was Peter, James, or Peter and John, going up to the, to the uh, temple to pray, and this man was sitting at the gate called Beautiful. Remember that man? And the first thing they said to him was, silver and gold, we don't have any. In other words, we just, we just as poor as you are, brother, in substance. You know? But what we do have is Jesus Christ, and we'll offer him to you. Are, are you hearing God? Amen. And so what does that say? That says that they didn't feel that, that the presence of Christ in them had exalted them above this man. Are you understanding? I'm talking about exalted above him according to society. You, you see? It, it didn't, they didn't feel exalted above society. As opposed to mindsets, glory to God, that ministers have, you know, some ministers have mindsets, if they don't have any money, they don't want nobody to know they don't have any. It, hello? They can be hungry and don't want you to know it. Well, that won't be Mary Banks. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. 
Glory to God, when I get hungry and don't have any money, I'm going to say, hey, Ricky, <laughs> I want some dim sum, and I don't have any money. I'm going to spend yours today. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Because we cannot allow the knowledge of God to puff us up and make us feel superior to people. I'm saying this because God wants us to be able to stay in a position to go to the nations. He wants us to remain in a, in, a, in a position of humility so that we can take this word to the nation. I don't want anything to stop this. I don't want anything to, to in, in, impede us in, in taking this word out, especially after yesterday, seeing how, how these people that have never heard this word gobbled it up. They gobbled it up, and, and they gobbled it to the point where they said, whoa, 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 this deep. You know, I need to go home and regurgitate. Amen. And look at this and look at that. You know, glory to God. That's, that's a blessing, saying That tells you what, what will happen in the nation if we, if we remain in that position of humility. Hello, and don't get all exalted and puffed up as if, oh, boy, we got it. You know, we, we got this message. Boy, nobody got it but us. And, you know, and all of that foolishness. That's foolishness. Amen. We got to remain in a state of humility in order to be qualified to carry it out. Amen? We got to desire the exhortation of our Lord. Amen? He said, if you were in the right place with God, if you, had a, if you were in obedience, you would know that what I'm teaching comes from God. Hello? Now, that's, I, can say that, I can say that today because when people sit in the church, if they're looking for God, they'll see him. If he's there, they'll see him. If they're really looking for God. Sometimes we're distracted because we're, we're, our mind is on something over in Timbuktu somewhere, or our focus is on the messenger instead of the message. Hello. And we miss the fact that God was visiting us. We miss the fact that, you know, God was right there talking, and we don't even know anything he said. And we evaluate the service based upon the performance of the messenger instead of the the the. the substance that was delivered by the messenger we're looking for a performance hello glory to god and so god is saying let's stay in that, let's remain in that position that enables us to be able to carry this word or to be qualified to carry it glory to god read on did not moses give you the law mm -hmm. and yet none of you keepeth the law <laughs> why go you about to kill me <laughs> Moses gave you the law and none of you keep it. Now, now I want you, I'm going to see if anybody's going to catch this. I, I really want you to, I, I, I want you to call on your spiritual man. I want you to call on the Holy Ghost in you to catch what's happening here. What is being said here? I want you to look at this, amen, and see if you can discern what's really being said here. Go, let's, let's, let's go inside of this in the spirit and let's see what's really being said here now all of a all of a sudden now because jesus had done something they didn't like he healed somebody or something they you know and they they didn't they didn't like it glory to god i think it, he did it on the sabbath day or something and uh they they you know they had to find fault you know anytime you know clergy don't don't if any time clergymen feel threatened, they're going to find fault with what you bring in them. You see? Now watch this. This is how Jesus is addressing their spiritual location. He's addressing their spiritual location. In that last verse he just read, 19 verse, he said, did not Moses give you the law? Now, uh, I think that um, he had healed someone. He had, he had healed somebody on the Sabbath or something, and they were upset about it, right? And he said, did, Mo, did not Moses give you the law? And none of you keep it. Why do you go about to kill me? In other words, they were accusing him of breaking the law of the Sabbath, right? And they want to kill him for breaking the law of the Sabbath. But they said, Moses gave you the whole law, and you don't, none of you don't keep it. Now, I wonder why they didn't 
look at the look at look at what they said. Look how they look at their response to that. Read that next verse. The people answered and said, "Thou hast a devil who goeth about to kill thee." Who goeth about to kill thee? That's what they're asking. Mm -hmm. Who go about to kill you? Now notice what they did. They they skirted the issue. They they, they didn't they, they didn't answer the question. <laughs> It, and he said, Moses gave you the law and none of you keep it. So why you go about to kill me? Because you say, I broke the law on the Sabbath day. But Jesus said, now no, watch this now. Jesus said, but Moses gave you the, you the law and none of you keep it. That's, an, that's a heavy accusation mm -hmm. to bring against members of the Sanhedrin council. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't, why couldn't, why wouldn't they address that? They say, who going about to, who, who, you, you just got a devil. You got a demon in you. Who is going about to kill you? They focusing on that. They rather focus on that than the issue at hand. The issue at hand is that you accuse me of breaking the law, but all of you had the law before I got here, and none of you keep it. Why do you think they couldn't address that? Because of the truth. Because normally... Normally, in a situation like that, you're the you're you're the you know you're the big wigs, and there's a lot of people standing around too. Hello, a lot of laymen standing around listening to this. Normally, people say, "What do you mean we don't keep the law? Who are you to judge us?" You know, normally that would have been a response, something on that line. They would have defended themselves. Hello? Normally they would have defended themselves. That would have been normal for these are leaders of the whole nation, the whole Jewish religion. And here this 30-year-old kid standing before them said, none of you keep the law. <laughs> Glory to God. And all they can say is, who's, who's trying to kill you? Are you, are you, are you, you got to see what's happening here. I don't think you see what's going on here yet. Look at verse 21. Well, I, we're, I'm just going to keep reading and see if you catch what's happening here. Jesus answered and said unto them, mm -hmm. I have done one work and you all marvel. I did one thing and you all marveling. I, I, I heal one person, and you all are just, or, or whatever the, the miracle was that he did, glory to God, and everybody is marveling. Watch this. Listen to what he said. Now, notice what he said here. You got to hear this, guys. I did one work, and you marvel. I want you to... Listen to that in light of Jesus never sought to make a reputation for himself. He never sought to make a reputation for himself, yet he says, I did one work, and you marvel. I did one work, and you marvel. Read. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, mm -hmm. not because it is of Moses. Not because, you know, Moses came up with the law of circumcision. Did he give it to you? Did he cause you to be circumcised? But what? Of the fathers, and you on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. Now, now notice what he says here. I, say, I want you to learn how to rightly divide the word. He said, Moses gave you the law of circumcision, not because it was his law. Not because it was his law, but because it was passed down to him by the fathers. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And so if a man is, if a male child is born on, on the Sabbath day, you, you circumcise him so that you can keep Moses' law. Mm -hmm. The law that didn't even come from Moses. So what are you doing? You're trying to keep from breaking what you think to be Moses' law. 
Are you, are you hearing this? Amen. Are, are, you, are you hearing this? I, I want you spiritual people to get this. Now, if you're spiritual, I want you to see this. Glory to God. Are you, are you, amen. There's something going on here. Mm -hmm. There's something going on here. Amen. If a man on the Sabbath day. If a man on the Sabbath day uh -huh. receive circumcision, uh -huh. that the law of Moses should not be broken. If a man is circumcised on the Sabbath day because he has to be circumcised with, by the eighth day, right? Mm -hmm. And so if that day fall on the Sabbath day, glory to God, just so that the law of Moses could not be broken. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you angry at me because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? If Moses broke the law, I mean, if you uh, circumcise a man, on the Sabbath day, that's breaking the law. You, you're not supposed to do no work on the Sabbath day. But you make sure that you don't break the law, Moses' law. You do it because you want to make sure you keep Moses' law, that law that Moses gave you. He says, so now, if I heal a man mm -hmm. on the Sabbath day, I make him every whit whole on the Sabbath day, now you want to kill me. But I'm doing the same thing you did. Why do you want to kill me? Mm -hmm. this, is the, this, this is the response Jesus is giving these people. Look at this next verse, though. Judge not according to their parents, but judge righteous judgment. What does that mean? How do you get judge not according to the appearance out of all of that? What is he talking about? Anybody caught a hold of it yet? Anybody call a hold of it yet? You know what's going on here? He's saying, I am God. You don't know what you're looking at. You don't know who you're talking to. You're, you're judging by the appearance. You're judging by this, this flesh that's standing before you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you hearing this? See, I, I want us to get in this mindset. I want us to get in this mindset that Jesus had. Jesus was allowing God to entertain these people. God was talking to them from start to finish. God said, <laughs> Moses gave you the law and you, none of you keep it. Why couldn't they, why couldn't they defend that? Because they're standing before Almighty God. They, they, they did the same thing L Lucifer did when God said, where you been, Satan? Uh, well, I've been up and down in the earth seeking whom I can devour. I want to kill some of your people. Amen. I want, to, I want to destroy them. He's standing at the throne of God. He's compelled to tell the truth. Come on. He's compelled to tell the truth. He's standing before the throne of God. So God asked him, where you been? He just told him the truth. He said, well, I've been walking up and down the earth. Why? Because God is the authority. God is the ultimate authority. And not only that, he knows that God is the authority. He knows God knows the truth. There's, hello. And there's something in these men. There's something in these men to know something, something different about this man this right here. Glory to God. There's something going on here. Something, what do you think was telling them? That spirit that was in them. That spirit that was in them was recognizing that there's something else here. That there's something, they couldn't, and they don't even understand what was happening. They don't even understand why they were so dumbfounded in the presence of this man. They already see that, that this man can unravel the scriptures just as well as they can or better. They have a, he has a, he's teaching a doctrine that they cannot refute because it's based upon the word of God that they're supposed to be studying every day and night, every waking moment of their lives, they're supposed to be studying that word. They represent the whole Jewish nation. 
But when this man says, none of you keep the law, they, don't even, they can't even find it in them to defend themselves. There's something about standing in the presence of God. <laughs> There's something about it. Amen. Standing right there in the presence of God. And some people have the guts to, 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 to just override. You know, some, sometimes you'll, you, people will, they'll miss, they'll miss that, that they're talking to God like Sapphire and Ananias did. They didn't even consider that I might have been talking to God. Amen. They didn't even consider that I was, I was talking to God. And as soon as they did what they did, they would judge. But now what did God say? God said, you guys are judging according to the flesh. You, you're judging according to the appearance. You, you, you think you're talking to this, this body that's standing before you. Amen? But you're talking to God. You're talking to your father right now. You're talking to Father God right now. Almighty God, creator. Why are you upset? Because I heal this man. Jesus didn't make no reputation for himself. So that was God talking. Hello? Jesus said, the works that I do are not mine. They are the Father's. Hello? But here the Father is speaking, saying, saying, I'm the one that made this man whole. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? Glory to God. Let me, let's, let, let me, let me go a little bit further. Go to the sixth chapter. St. John 6. Praise you, Jesus. Now, Jesus had walked on the water, gone over to Capernaum, I believe it was, and the people followed him. The people got, when they saw that Jesus wasn't on, on the other side where they were, they got ships and boats and whatever, and they went on the other side over to Capernaum looking for Jesus. A whole multitude of people. And let's look, let's look here in the uh, 24th verse, St. John 6, 24. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, mm -hmm. neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. Uh -huh. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Now listen to Jesus' response. In other words, Jesus is about to say, it don't matter when I came. Watch this. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Not because you saw the miracles, but because you were a partaker. That's why you're following me. Now, you know, Jesus just, he just cut to the chase and he said, you know, I know why you're following me. Because you ate. I fill you up and you're looking for something else to eat. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Look at this 27th verse. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, mm -hmm. but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. For him has God the Father sealed. In other words, God is in me. Notice what he said. He's going to give eternal life. Everlasting life. Which the Son of God, Son of Man shall give unto you. He's, you. You see what he's saying? Seek that meat that endures forever, which the Son of Man is going to give unto you. Why? Because the Father has sealed him. In other words, the Holy Spirit is in him. The Spirit of life is in him. God is in him. Are you hearing God? Read on. Then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Mm -hmm. 
Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he hath sent. Okay, now, th now that's important. Because we want to know what I got to do to, to work miracles. What I got to do to do all that work of God. He said, just believe. Believe on the one that's sending you. Because the work is not yours. It's his. That's what he's saying. He's saying, if you just believe on Jesus, Jesus will do the work. You're trying to believe. You're, 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 uh, you, remember, you remember the scripture that says we pray amiss? Sometimes we believe amiss. We believe in the wrong thing. We're believing for the wrong thing. We want God to, to uh, empower us to do the work. When God is saying, just believe on Jesus and Jesus will do the work. Are you, are you hearing God? Just believe on Jesus and Jesus will work through you. That's the works of God. That is the work of God. In other words, there's what, what, you can't work your way to heaven. Come on. The works are not yours. They're not going to be yours. If your work is to believe and to obey, that's the works that you do. Believe and obey. Be, allow yourself to be led by the Father, led by the Spirit, because it is the Father that is going to do the works. The excellency of the power is of God. And if you believe on the one that sent you, then now you know it's him. It is he that does the work and not you. It is him that does the work. And see, that is a pre, that's a prerequisite to performing the works of, of God. Because if we don't focus on the fact that it's God that is going to do the work through this body, then we'll seek our own. We'll seek some glorification here. Come on, are you working with me? We've got to allow our, our focus to maintain itself on the fact that the Father is the one that's doing the work. And it's him that seeks to be glorified through this flesh. Are you working with me? Read on, this gets very interesting. They said therefore unto him, mm -hmm. What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Go ahead. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Now, now listen to this. Listen to this. These people are so silly. It's, it's, now, Jesus just fed 5,000 men and their wives and their children. So there's no telling how many people were there. He just took, what, two loaves, five loaves, and two fish. Five loaves and two fish and fed ten or 15,000 people. And then they ask, what sign are you going to give us? <laughs> you see, the devil will make a fool out of you. What sign are you going to give us? These are people that are trying to hold on to unbelief, a position of unbelief. These are people that are not willing to say, this is God, that we're dealing with God here. Now, so now you're looking for another sign. Now, what more can he do? And, and then some of the people begin to say, now, if the Messiah comes, is he going to do more than this man? My goodness, as much as he's done, you see? Glory to God. So let us not allow the enemy to make us foolish like that. Amen? And notice what he says here. Read on. Then Jesus... Now, wait a minute. Before you go, he, said, he says, Moses. Talking about Moses, you know. Our fathers. That's what he's talking about, Moses. Uh, Moses and, and all the crew that was with Moses. Our fathers, ate, our fathers ate manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Now, like I said, these people don't realize they're talking to God. Now, li listen, listen to his response to that. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Hallelujah. He's saying that bread that fell down from the heavens, that wasn't the real bread. That was substance that you can eat and still die. <laughs> but the true bread my father's about to give you. That, see, in other words, they're, he, they're, they're highlighting that Moses did such great miracle mm -hmm. here. Now, what are you going to do to top that? That's what they're saying to him. 
that, that, that Moses gave us bread from heaven. Now, what are you, what, what you going to do? What, what's your next move here? What are you going to do to top that? That's what they're doing. They're, they're being very sarcastic here and ignorant. Glory to God. So we're looking for a sign from you that's, better, that's greater than that one. So Jesus said, let me tell you something. The bread Moses gave you, that it was edible, and it, it came down. But let me tell you something. My father is about to give you the true bread from heaven. Mm. Are, you, are you hearing from me? Amen. Amen. For the bread of who? Of God of is, is he that cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Now that's the real bread. Amen. There's bread that came down from heaven. You don't even realize that you're entertaining it. Hello. But this is the bread of life that my father is about to give you. You don't understand. You don't, you're, you're stuck back there in tradition, and you're trying to cause me to compete with condition, for tradition. I'm not in competition with tradition because everything in tradition pointed to me. Hello? Everything pointed to me. And if you move outside of your iniquities and your self-exhortation, your pride, you'll hear from God. You'll realize who you're dealing with. Are you hearing God? Amen. Read on. Then said they unto him, mm -hmm. Lord, evermore give us this bread. Uh-huh, give it and, to us. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. <laughs> you he, want this bread? I am the bread. Mm-hmm. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, mm -hmm. and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Uh -huh. But I said unto you that you also have seen me and believe not. Now, you, you, you see me? You've seen what I've done. See, see these people, these people uh, act as if they're talking to some ignorant man somewhere. But Jesus knew their hearts. God knew their hearts, and he knew what they knew and what they didn't know. Glory to God. He says, you've seen me. You, in other words, you've seen what, what the Father has done through me, and you still don't believe. Mm. You, you, you've investigated me. You had your spies in every, every session that I've been in. You had your spies in there. You've seen the miracles that I've done. You've seen the diseases that I've healed. Come on. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. You know I've raised the dead. Glory to God. You've seen, but you still don't believe. You still don't believe. Now, listen to this. Mm -hmm. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. So in other words, if you were given to me by my Father, you would come to me. You would receive this. You don't understand. But my father didn't make you a part of this. Mm. He didn't give you to me because he knew your hearts are going to be hardened against me. Mm. He knew your, your, you were, your hearts would remain hard. Are you hearing God? Watch this. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will. Now he getting really deep here on these people. Now he, he's setting himself up for death now. He is. He's setting himself up there. He said, I... So he's going, he cut into the chase. I came down from heaven. He just said he was the bread. I'm the bread of life. Glory to God. Then he come, turns right around and said, I came down from heaven. <laughs> Why? These people are going to get upset with him. Glory to God. Listen to what he says here. Not to do mine own will, mm -hmm. but the will of him that sent me. So somebody in heaven sent me. I was in heaven before I, before I came here. Listen to Jesus. I was in heaven before I came here. I was sent down here by my father. Oh, boy. Listen to this. And this is the father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, mm -hmm. but should raise it up again at the last day. Mm -hmm. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now Jesus just cut to the chase, 
and let these people know I'm the first of all I'm the bread I'm the real bread my father has I, I and not only that I was in heaven now, now here's a 30 year old Jewish boy born with all that controversy around him and he's telling these members of the Sanhedrin council I was I was in heaven before I came here <laughs> come on now I was in heaven before I came here. My father sent me. Now, he's saying that, though, in light of. Notice what he said first. You have seen me. In other words, he's saying that in light of all the works that you've seen me do. You better consider what I'm telling you. You need to consider what I'm telling you because show me the man that could do what I've done. Huh? Show me an earthly man that could do what has been done. Now you want to sit down and compare me to Moses. The law Moses gave you, I gave it to him. In one juncture, he says, I was before Moses and Abraham. Hello? You see? So he, he cut to the chase here because you're going to kill me anyhow. You're going to have me crucified. So let me just let you know. Let me deal with you now while I got you here. Let me just deal with you. Let me tell you where you are. You have seen me. You have seen the miracles I've done. You know about me. You done sent your spies out, but you still don't believe. You still don't believe. You see this? Glory to God. Now watch this. Now I want you to drop down here. Watch this here. Look at that 41st verse. The Jews then murmured at him because he said... I am the bread which came down from heaven. Now they murmured because he said, I'm the bread that came down from heaven. <laughs> See, Jesus said, if I'm going to die, I might as well die for something. Glory to God. Let me, just tell you, let me just tell you where I am. Glory to God. I am the bread that came down from heaven. Listen to this. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know, uh -huh. How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Now, you, now we know this man. We don't, we've checked him out. This is that same boy that, that, that Mary had in fornication. Mm. They even, at one juncture, called him a bastard to his face. Bastard child. These people were bold. They were very bold. They say, is this, 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 you see, and, and you, know, you know what people will do? Notice what they did. Is this not Mary and Joseph's son? Is this not Mary and Joseph's son? They don't want others to believe in him. They didn't believe in him, and they don't want others to believe in him. So what did they do? They rehearsed the controversy of his birth. They rehearsed the controversy. Read. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, murmur not among yourselves. In other words, don't talk, don't, don't talk among yourselves. Talk to me. I'm talking to you, so you, talk, you need to talk to me. Praise you, Jesus. Listen to him. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Let me tell you something, brothers. You can't even receive this. Because my father is not drawing you to it. Mm. Are you hearing it? Because he knows your heart is not right. Mm. Your heart is not right to receive this. Go forward. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the father cometh unto me. Uh huh. Not if you were taught... If you were, listen to what it said, and they shall all be taught of who? The of who? The Father. Of God. They shall all be taught of God. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that has heard and has learned of the Father, come to me. They'll be taught by God. And not man. Mm. If they have an ear to hear. If they open their hearts up to hear. To receive. 
if they don't harden their hearts. If your heart is hardened, then you won't be able to receive this. Are you hearing God? Look at this. Not that any man have seen the Father, mm -hmm. save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. Mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Uh -huh. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. <laughs> they, they, they ate, then you want to talk about Moses. Amen. What Moses gave you to eat. Glory to God. That bread that they ate. Yeah, they ate it, but now they're dead. <laughs> Glory to God. They ate that bread and they're dead. Listen to Jesus. This is a preacher here. Amen. This is the bread which cometh down from where? Heaven. Uh-huh. That a man may eat thereof and not die. In other words, if you eat the bread that my father is about to give you, you won't die. Mm -hmm. You will not die. Are you hearing God? Amen. Watch this. I am the living bread. I'm the living bread. Are you talking about eating bread and then you say you the bread? Hallelujah. Which which came down from heaven, mm -hmm. if any man eat of this bread, uh -huh. he shall live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Wow. The bread that I'm going to give. Watch this. All right. We're coming to our lesson now. We're coming to that. <laughs> We've been a long time getting here, but we're here. Amen. <laughs> The bread that I'm going to give you is my flesh. Mm -hmm. The bread that I'm going to give you is my flesh. And if you eat it, you'll never die. Now, I want you to connect the dots here. Let's think in terms of the saving of the soul. All right? Soul is preserved in the spirit, right? Glory to God. The, <laughs> the bread that Jesus talked about is his flesh, his flesh. And notice that he says in the 17th chapter of St. John, remember he said, Father, glorify me. He said, as thou has given him power over all flesh, He's saying more here than that I'm going to be crucified, that my flesh is going to be nailed to the cross and my flesh is going to be emaciated by, you know, the Roman um, cords and whips and whatever. He's saying more than that. That's true, but he's saying more than that here. He's saying, because he's saying, if you eat my flesh, he's saying, I'm going to give it to you. He says, he says I'm going to give you eternal life because... I'm going to give you my flesh. This, let's read that. Let's show you what he says. Watch what he says here. I, listen to what he says here. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give him is what? I'm going to give you my flesh. Remember in the saving of the soul, the, 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 the soul was in the spirit but it had to come back into the body, but it didn't come back in the old man. It came back into the new man. And, and, and Ephesians 5 and 30 says, you are the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. In other words, that this body that we're in now, this is the bread of life. We're eating the bread of life right now. Glory to God. Now, I'll prove it to you. I'll prove you to you in a minute that this taking on this body is us eating the bread of life and drinking the blood of Jesus. When we took it on, when we took on this body, when we put on the new man, that's what he's teaching here. Remember this principle. You must remember this principle. I taught it in um, Rightly Dividing the Word. The old covenant is our schoolmaster, right? We, we learn that, and it points to spiritual things in the new. But when we get to the new covenant, the gospels, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, when everything that you read inside of the epistles, 
Jesus taught it first. Don't ever forget that. So we're teaching that the soul is that, that we're in Christ and Christ is in us. Jesus had to teach that first before the apostles could teach it. Are, are you hearing God? Uh, see, we got to confirm this. Every word got to be established out of the mouth of two or more witnesses. And, and these guys were bearing witness in the epistles of what Jesus taught in the Gospels. Are, are you working with me? So what am I saying? I'm saying, that, I'm saying that when we put on the new man, we put on, we were eating the, the flesh of Christ and drinking his blood. Because we now were brought back into this body that is no longer the old man but it's the new man right and see i want you to connect these dots and the scripture gonna do it for you amen are you are you with me glory god so let's prove it so you'll know that dr banks has a, is not off her rocker here <laughs> amen read the 50 second verse the jews therefore strove among themselves mm -hmm saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? See, they still in the flesh. They, they can't see. <laughs> they, 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 and, and um, <laughs> how can he give us his flesh to eat? They think in cannibalism. <laughs> they really are. They said, it's a hard saying here. And Jesus had 82 disciples at this time. And when he finished preaching this message, he only had 12. <laughs> Amen. Because they said, this is a hard saying here. Because all they could hear, they couldn't hear with the Spirit. They couldn't hear. Glory to God. They couldn't hear. Even they, they, didn't, they didn't even open their inner man up to hear what the Lord was saying. They're hearing with the fleshy ear. Glory to God. Are you, are you hearing God? And so this, this thing of, was, a, was, became, was becoming very offensive. How can he give us his flesh? How can he give us his flesh to eat? Are you following me? Read the next verse. Then Jesus said unto them, mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Boy, you got to be spiritual to hear that. Praise you. Gee, God got to be working with you to hear that. God got to be drawing you to hear that. Come on, read. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now listen to this <clears throat> 55th verse here. For my flesh is meat mm -hmm, indeed, mm -hmm. and my blood is drink indeed. Uh -huh. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood uh -huh. dwelleth in me and I in him. Oh, praise you, Jesus. You have eaten my flesh and drunk my blood when you're in me and I'm in you. How are you in me? The soul is submerged into the spirit. How is Christ in you? Christ steps into the flesh. Makes it a new man. And when you take on the new man, you have eaten his flesh and drunk his blood. Do you understand it? Amen. Clap your hands and tell him thank you. <laughs> Dr. Leverett. My, 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 my. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is just open up his, opening up his heart. Oh, my Lord. I just sat there just in the presence of Jesus and just had the Father talking to us. Did you feel that? Did you experience that? Did you experience that? The Father interacting with us, just talking to us, just teaching us. That's precious. That's, that's, that's really, really, really precious. Hallelujah. And so we can't take what God is doing lightly. Because inside of the message, God is charging us as well. God is charging us as well. Hallelujah. I'm so excited by what God is doing. Each time I come, 
I'm hearing more. It's getting deeper and deeper and deeper. But you know what it's doing? It's almost like it's sending your own roots down too. It's, 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 it's making you stronger. You know? Hallelujah. 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 I just want to give God some praise. Yes, I just want to, to just honor him and just tell him how lovely he is and how precious he is. Hallelujah. I did not have to live to hear this, you know, but God preserved me. He kept me and he's kept us for a purpose. And I'm not going to take this lightly. You know, I'm not just going to take this as a good, nice, deep teaching and that I've comprehended it with my fleshy mind. This has gone much further. Hallelujah. This is not academics. This is our life. This is our calling. This is what we have been called to. And for me, it's just precious to hear Jesus today. It's just precious. I want to praise him. Hallelujah. I want to give him glory. Hallelujah. I want to give him honor. Hallelujah. I want to worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to ask you to indulge. Hallelujah. Just to, to, just to forget about yourself for a moment. And just to let him know how much we appreciate him. Hallelujah. Just to let him know how, how, how grateful we are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if in the middle of this, you know, I'm just expecting God to do his stuff. In the middle of this, if you need salvation and you need healing, believe Jesus. Believe Jesus. Believe the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I worship you, almighty God, almighty God. Almighty God, Just for a few moments, since. there is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is why. pause and I just want us to reflect that true worship is just giving to God a sinless life. True worship is just embracing every word that is proceeding out of God's mouth to us. You know, Wednesday night 
you know, when the disciple, when we were being discipled, I heard the apostle says, I've eaten the entire book. She was saying, I've eaten everything that proceed from the mouth of God. That ought to be our testimony. Everything God tells me, I obey him. I choose to obey him in everything. He's equipped me to obey him in everything. I have a choice. And I'm going to obey him because I love him. Just because I love him. Just because I love him. Just because I love him. I choose to obey him at all times. Hallelujah. But there may be somebody in the audience who may need Jesus. Who may need to be saved. Who may need to cry out to God for mercy. Who may be able to see Jesus today, but you know you're not saved. Just to be able to see Jesus and know that's God. That's an honor. That's a privilege from God. You might not be able to see him at another point. But if you're able to discern Jesus today and you know you're not saved or your heart is not right, come and let us pray together. Zero one. Those of you online, we're just thanking God for your coming and joining and being worship with us. And we invite you to come again um, on Wednesday night and on Friday night and back again on Sunday live next week. But God is after our hearts. If you're not saved, you also need to cry out to God. If you're saved, God wants us to be holy all the time. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anybody that is coming? Hallelujah. 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 So we're in the presence of the Lord. And the assumption is that we're all saved and walking holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, saints. Hallelujah. As Doc ministered today, I am reminded of something that came into my spirit last night. And I posted um, that quote on Facebook and Twitter last night. But as Doc ministered the message today, I'm reminded of that. Some of you may be aware that I have a death in my family that my uncle passed on. And, you know, as you're there preparing, you know, for the last rites and everything, there's a seriousness that comes on as it relates to death. And I've realized, or it has come to full realization last night, that there is one cure for death. And that cure is a resurrection. Because Jesus said, I am Hallelujah. the resurrection and the life. And as Doc ministered today, I'm reminded that if we do not partake of that flesh, if we do not partake of that blood, then we would not receive the cure. Then our soul would be lost. So as Pastor George called and entreat you all whether you know Christ or not but you want to have that guarantee of the cure then the only way is through Jesus hallelujah and be sufficient in the things of God as well.
Amen. Awesome, awesome, Bishop. But mm-hmm. man, that's just great, bro. Yeah. That's just great. But in order to have Hallelujah. that mindset, you got. Father, you have spoken in such clear terms. Lord, we heard you. We heard you, Lord. We we heard you with, with words that we cannot even explain the clarity and the realness with which we heard you. But we heard you, Father. And so today, Lord, we want to thank you for coming, Lord, and tabernacling with us, Lord. Father, we appreciate you, Lord. That you, 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 you come and, and you make yourself, Lord, just so plain, Lord. Just so sweet, Lord. Your embrace was just so sweet, Jesus, in this place today. And Father, in our hearts, we feel you beckoning some, Lord. Father, we ask, oh God, that you will break away the shackles. We ask that you'll break away the chains. We ask that you'll break away every mindset that would hinder Lord, they are coming to you. Lord, we we see your desire that none be lost, Lord Jesus. And so, Lord, even as we sit or we stand before you, you know our hearts, Lord. Hallelujah. We're not looking at flesh, Lord. You know all that is before you, Lord Jesus. And so, Lord, we ask for mercy in your house today. We ask for mercy on souls today, Lord Jesus. We ask you for a little more long-suffering, Lord Jesus. We ask that you will shake up some some more hearts, O God. And give them the urgency, Lord, of the need to make things right with you, Lord. Father, our brother spoke of, of the mortality of mankind, Lord Jesus. Father, we ask, O God, that no one in the presence, O God, of this message today, O God, will go out and not make it right with you. This is your mystery, Lord. This is salvation. This is what you hid in yourself. This is your treasure. This is just your preciousness, Lord Jesus. Let's not be as hogs, O God, that, that that, that we cast pearls before, Lord. But, Lord, may we be as sheep that as we hear you, Lord, we just gravitate and obey you. We thank you today, Lord. We love you so much, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we thank you for the love that you've placed in our hearts for each other. Oh, God, we just love you and we love your people. We bless you. We enlarge you. We magnify you in this place. And Father, those who are in the seats and need salvation, Father, we don't know that it has to be at the altar here. But Father, if they will just make an altar in their heart, in their seat to you, Lord Jesus. If they would just cry out, oh God, in their spirit. If their soul would just say, come and see about me. I've heard enough. I want you now. I need you more than I need life. Lord, we know you would be faithful. You would be faithful. You would be faithful. You are faithful and true. And we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm just basking in the presence of the Lord. Amen. You know place is just feeling so good. You just know God is here. Not that he was here, but that he is here and he's inside of us. Hallelujah. I worship the Lord today. I honor him. You know, I just I just like to be amongst the brethren. I come in and it, it just does something. You know, just being amongst the brethren. Um, there's something that your presence gives me even if you don't talk. I, I, I don't even know how to explain it. But something in you gives me something just by seeing you. Just by seeing your worship. You know, just by seeing your ministering. You know, I, I saw Anik and really just worship the Lord, you know, unreservedly unashamedly just holding back nothing and just watching she just moved she didn't say a word but I was just so blessed you know I saw Clifton come and minister the notices 
And I was just so blessed. Praise and worship. We sang together. And I was so blessed. Doc came and she preceded the message by singing. And I was so blessed. And then the message came with such, I'm, I'm, I'm stealing a word from Sister Hazel, with such richness. And I was overly blessed. Hallelujah. Anika. Yes. <laughs> yes. Anika's poetry. Amen. Yeah. God, this is just a good place to be a part of this family. I'm glad to be a part of the family of God. But I'm even the more happy to be a part of BT. This is our ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. God has placed us together. Hallelujah. And caused us to appreciate holiness and to respect holiness and to walk in holiness. And so at this time, we're going to worship in our tithe and offering, in our giving unto the Lord. So I'm going to ask the ministers to come and to... Uh,